صلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم اما بعد نعم الشافعي رحمه الله تعالى he said لو ما انزل الله تبارك وتعالى على عباده الا هذه السوره لكفتهم if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed nothing in the Quran or from the Quran except for this surah will be enough for the people which surah is that in the Surah Al-Asr. Surah Al-Asr. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed nothing except for the surah, it will be sufficient for the people, which means it is enough to uh, mention everything that you need to know in terms of the, the meaning of this life, the meaning of the akhirah, and a roadmap for you as a believer. Like, what do I need to do in this life as a believer? How can I make sure that I'm doing the right thing in this life? So Surah Al-Asr is one of the shortest surahs in the Quran, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by saying, Wal Asr, I swear to you by Al-Asr. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He swears by Al-Asr. And for us, you can't swear by anything except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But He subhanahu wa ta'ala, He swears by whatever He wants. And when He does subhanahu wa ta'ala to show the significance of the matter that He's using for His oath subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah said, Wal Asr, I swear to you by Al-Asr. What's the meaning of Al-Asr? The ulama in Tafsir, they mention multiple definitions, multiple meanings for it. So one of the major ones is saying, Allah swear by time in general. Like, I swear to you by time. When obviously time for us is significant. It's your life. Every single breath that you take is bringing you closer to the expiration moment for you. So it's Allah swear, so look, I swear to you by the time, that the one that you live in. Some ulama, they say, no, actually Allah speaks about particularly Al-Asr, which means the time after Salat Al-Asr, which means the forenoon time. Why is that so significant? Because out of all the hours of the day, or all the, the, the time frames that we live in, one of the most neglected time is Al-Asr. Think about yourself yesterday or the day before yesterday. What were you doing after Asr time? You're probably driving back relaxing, waiting for Maghrib to come in, just kind of like wasting time, or maybe eating, whatever that is. Ma most people at time of Asr time, they do not dedicate time for ibadah, for ta'ah, for worship. It's more for recreation or for relaxation. Some they say Al-Asr is actually your personal time. I swear by your lifetime. That's what it is. But each and every one of us, they have their own lifetime, obviously, that have been dedicated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I swear to you by the time that you live on this earth. And some of the ulama, they say, Al-Asr is the Asr of the Prophet, his generation. I swear to you by that generation. Because one of the best generations ever produced to mankind. Salawatullahi wa alayhi. So there's many meanings for the word Al-Asr. But overall, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by time. And there are other surahs Allah swears by time as well too, like Wadduha, for example. But here, he says, I swear to by Al-Asr. Why? He goes, Inna al-insan lafi khusr. Every single insan is a constant state of loss. Every insan is a constant state of loss. What does that even mean? Losing what? So, once you're born, you know, when people celebrate every, what do they celebrate? Birthdays, right? Because you become one, become two, become three, four, five. Like we grow older, right? But in reality, actually, what happens whenever you celebrate birthday, you're not celebrating growth as much as loss. What does that mean? I mean, it's just like once you're born, everybody is born with what? Everybody is born with uh, an expiration date. When you're born, you're born with the time stamped already, you know, when we're gonna die. As a matter of fact, I keep joking to people who said, have you seen the doctors when they pull the baby out? They grab the baby from their feet and they look around. They're looking for the expiration date. Every insan, every insan has an expiration date. And from the moment you're born, you're now heading towards that expiration date. So if Allah has designated 60 years for you, 50 years for you, 25 years, that's it, they're now moving closer to that expiration date. 
So indeed, every insan is a constant state of loss. Which means that time that you live in, you're losing. You're always losing that time. That precious time, you're losing. In the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, every day in the morning, every day in the morning, when the, when the sun rises, the day, the day starts speaking to you. Ya ibn Adam, O oh son of Adam, listen, I'm a new day. I'm a new day, I come only once. And once I'm gone, I don't come back until the day of judgment to check and tell you how, how much you did in that day. So every person is a constant state of loss. And then the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر Except for those who have these four qualities. But everybody in a constant state of loss. Except those who bring these things. What are they? Number one, آمنوا They have faith. Number two, عملوا الصالحات Acted upon this faith. Number three, they enjoin each other, meaning they, they, they invest in each other to follow the truth. Number four, and they also encourage each other to be patient. Let's talk about this for you, inshallah, a few minutes, because that's what's going to make you survive and, and win that whole in life kind of like uh, uh, that you're living in. It says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except for those who have faith. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who have faith, what does that mean? First of all, faith is supposed to be based on what in your mouth. Here in this culture, it's a blind faith. As Muslims, we do not believe in blind faith. We believe in, in, in educated faith. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, annahu la ilaha illallah. You have the knowledge that there is no God worthy of worship for Allah azza wa ta'ala. Like it has to come from absolute conviction from the heart. And that happens when you know, when you learn. And Allah subhanahu says in the Quran, and He says about those who know, قال, That those who truly fear the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala among all His servants are those of the knowledge. The more you know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you appreciate Him. As Allah says in the Quran, قال, They've never got, given Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the right estimate for Him. When we don't assume and know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, we, we misbehave. But if you know that Allah Azza wa is a Sami al Basir, He's the one who hears everything, the one who sees everything. He's the one who's al Razzaq, the one who provides, the one who gives life and takes it back. You know all these amazing, beautiful names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you believe in it in a manner that suits His Majesty. That in itself is enough to bring the people down to humbleness and humility. It humbles you and puts you where you belong to be a true servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But without that knowledge of Allah azza wa jal, people must behave. If they don't know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears everything, He sees everything, whether Allah is the one who gives and He takes, and if Allah is testing you, if you don't know all these things, they lost the meaning of this life and they will misbehave. So He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Except for those who have faith. And if you have faith, you have conviction in your heart, that translates into action. Because now I know that I need to worship him and him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qal wa salihat. And also they practice based on these good, this, this knowledge. You practice what you know. So you practice what you know. And wa salihat was mentioned in the Quran in many, many ayahs. What does that mean? Just claiming to have faith is not sufficient. You have to prove it. You have to prove it. A man came to the Prophet one day and he said, Tell me something about Islam that I need to learn from you. I don't have to ask anyone after you. The Prophet he summarized Islam to him in two words. Say, I believe, and then prove it. Say, I believe, and then practice. Remain steadfast. So he's telling them, don't make this just an empty talk, saying, I believe, and then you do something different. No, you say, I believe, and then prove it. Those who <coughs> practice what they believe in, they're very powerful. 
Brothers and sisters, you know, sometimes we feel very hypocritical, right? We feel very, very hypocritical. Sometimes you wake up in the morning, you feel that you're like, I would be like the, the munafiqeen. So, oh my God, I just feel so terrible. And sometimes you feel yourself, mashallah, and way up there in the sky, as if you're Jibreel, alayhi <laughs> salam. Especially in Ramadan. In Ramadan, towards the end, you feel so good and so great that you start crying, you wish Ramadan doesn't stop, you know, and doesn't end. Because it gives you that sense of power, of practice and salah and siyam and ibadah, qurat al Quran, being with people and so on. What does that mean for us? You see, the reason why we feel weak and we feel hypocritical, because how many of us claim that they practice everything they learn? So if this is the level of your knowledge, how much do you practice from your knowledge? None of us can say, I do everything I know. Because if you do, you're already an angel. But as humans, we know this level, and we practice barely that level of what we know. Now, the greater the gap between what you know and what you practice, the more hypocritical you will feel, and the weaker you will be. And the smaller the gap between what you know and what you practice, the stronger and more powerful you will feel. All your life, all what you guys are doing in your life, you're trying to close that gap. Sometimes we get a little bit tired, so we can relax a little bit. So suddenly we fall, we go far away from our practice. And then alhamdulillah, we recover, we go back again to do better. We close that gap a little bit. And then it goes back bigger. So it's always fluctuating between what you know and what you practice. You want to feel strong? You want to feel a strong believer? Then work on your practice. If you know that there's a virtue for fasting Mondays and Thursdays, why aren't you fasting Mondays and Thursdays? If you know that the Hajjud is very virtuous, why aren't you praying the Hajjud, waking up for the Hajjud? If you know that coming to the Masjid to learn and attend the Halaqah will increase your knowledge and Allah will raise you in ranks, why aren't you doing this? If you know that being charitable is rewarding, why aren't you doing that? If you, you know that smile in the face of the believer is actually an act of charity, if you're being kind to your parents, to your spouse, to your children, if you know all of that stuff, where is that practice? Now obviously we're human beings. What does that mean? You're gonna forget. We're gonna get weaker. We're gonna get tired. That's why Allah says after that call, Watawasaw bilhaq. Because I need you and you need me. We need each other. Because we can't do it alone. We as a community, we've been taught to do everything collectively as well too. We have a lot of ibadah that needs to be done together. Like what? Like Salat al Salat al Jum'ah. Salat al Jama'ah, you come to uh, uh, Tarawih, uh, when, you, when you come to the Masjid to do activities together. Like there are a lot of things we need to do together. So we've been encouraged to practice, to practice together. We need each other. I need you to remind me, and I need to remind you. If I see you doing well, I will praise you, I will encourage you for it. If I see you doing otherwise, I will remind you that this is not what you're supposed to be doing. So we're going to always need each other. But tawasaw bil Now you guys understand that tawasaw bil is not easy. What does that mean? When you, when, you, when you train people and remind people, not everybody will be happy with what you're saying. Right? I mean, when you try to tell someone you're wrong, are they going to give you a hug? They're most likely going to fight back. So it's not going to be easy. That's why Allah says, Qal, wa tawasaw bil sabr which means what? They're also going to be patient. Allah says that they encourage each other to be patient. <coughs> because Allah knows subhanahu wa ta'ala, this path is not going to be easy. And when the Prophet ﷺ was first sent to mankind, the first thing, Waraqa ibn Nawfal, the man who Khadija took him to, radiallahu anha, he told him something very significant about being on the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, قال, I wish I could be strong enough, young and strong to help you and support you 
when your people drive you out of your town. And the Prophet was shocked. My own people? Are they going to drive me out of my own town? He said, No one, no one ever brought to people what you bring them from a message like that, but they will get their hostility. Because people don't like to be told you're wrong, change that, you better do this, you better do that. No one likes to be told that way. And we rebel and we fight back. So which means, in order for us to remain steadfast, we need to be patient with each other. Calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bring them to the truth, it's, it sounds easy because when you bring the people, the truth to the people, it's supposed to be easy for them to follow. But reality of life teaching us otherwise. It's not easy to convince people to do that which is right. So it requires a lot of patience on your part. What is the reward for patience anyway? And that's something interesting. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a reward for praying in jama'ah, He said 26, 27 degrees. If you read Quran, you get reward for every letter that you recite. If you give charity, 10 times up to 700 and more. So almost everything that you do, good deeds, there's a measurable reward for it. Except for patience. Allah subhanahu says about patience, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall reward those who persevere in patience without measure. Because I can't put a price tag on your patience. I can't. Being patient is one of the greatest rewards, the greatest actually good deeds that you do, you practice. In Hadith Abdullah bin Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu wa rda, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, قال, وَمَا أُوْتِيَ أَحَدٌ عَطَاءً أَنْفَعَ وَلَا أَوْسَعَ مِنَ الصَّبَرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did, did not bestow any ni'mah, any blessing upon anybody. It is more, more spacious and better for them than being patient. The more patient you are, the more level you know, headed you are. And you will be able to make better choices and better decisions. That's why patience is extremely, extremely important. Obviously, in our time is one of those precious commodity that is very scarce in the life of people. Very, very actually, little people, few people who really practice patience properly. Why is that? Because we live in a, in a fast-paced lifestyle. We live in the culture of what we call the instant gratification. All of this fueled by what? By the type of life that we have, by the internet, by social media, by you know the, the easy access to things and, and services and commodities. I remember a time when you used to make orders online, it would take about two weeks for your order to arrive. Anyone remember that at Jamal? Today, if it comes more than two days, you cancel the order. It's taken too long. I remember the days when you used to go to the internet, you have to plug the phone you know, line into your computer in the back and bring this you know, horrible CDs and put them in the computer and then connect and then you hear you, you're online, you got mail and, and you start downloading a 10 kilobyte, 10 kilobyte, you know what kilobyte even? I don't think so. <laughs> 10 kilobyte of Word file and it takes half an hour watching that blue bars filling in front of your eyes and you celebrate until one of your family members pulls the phone, you know, uh, from the other room, and then you get interrupted, and then you have to download it over here. I'm just like, oh my God. Today, today, if a 10 gigabyte movie doesn't download in three seconds, you get you get tired, you get actually bored. You switch to the next the next video. You don't want to have. We can't even wait for three seconds for the video to buffer. You just go to the next video. Immediately. People don't have patience anymore because they live a fast paced lifestyle and they want everything to be done in an instant. So, even subhanAllah, to the extent that these days people don't want to even go down into the shop, or the shop, the grocery store to get their stuff. They order everything online, just pick it up and just leave right away. We lost that the skill of being patient. And as a result, when there is no patience, there's a lot of expectation and a lot of entitlement in our lives. 
That's why a lot of people are always disappointed and always angry because they lost that patience. So my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah, He gave us a summary of everything that you need to do in this life. He swears by al-asr, the precious time that is always lost. Because in the insan, if you khusr, each and every one of us, in a constant state of loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ So we have faith, we act upon this faith, and then we, we encourage each other to follow it, and be patient, and remain steadfast on this path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We remember the, finally the statement of the Prophet وسلم, that summarized all of us. When this man came to the Prophet, he said, Ya Rasulullah, teach me something that I need to learn from you and only from you about Islam. He says, Qul amantu billahi mustafa. Say, I believe, and then prove it. And that's all I'm asking from you. In time when belief right now is going down, because people, they, they trust more material world than the heavenly world. Unfortunately, our practice becomes weaker and weaker. So it's extremely important that we believe and we prove it. That's what's going to keep you safe, inshallah ta'ala, and see and, and in this dunya. Imam al Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, عند المصيبة يظهر الإنسان عن العلم. When the calamity strikes, people become heedless of knowledge. What does that mean? It doesn't matter how much you know, how much you know, this is haram, this is right, this is, oh, you should be patient. It doesn't, know, doesn't matter how much you know. When the calamity strikes, people, they lose that knowledge. And they start acting irrationally. He goes, the only thing that, strength, that keeps the person remain steadfast is the strength of their iman. And you start, the strength of your iman is based on what? Based on the level of your practice, not the level of your knowledge. So the more you practice of what you learn and what you know, the stronger you become with your Iman. And the stronger you become with your Iman, the better chance for you have to remain steadfast in a time of difficulty and hardship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from these hardships, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who listen to the speech and follow the best of it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us strengthen our Iman. We ask Allah azza wa to give us that knowledge that is beneficial to us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And make us among those who benefit from what they learn. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to practice what we learn. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our iman with this knowledge and practice, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who always seek the truth and only the truth. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide our hearts to the truth, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah Azza wa to show us that which is right and make it easy for us to follow it. And that which is wrong and make it easy to stay away from it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us persevere in patience in this dunya. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us to go through it, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the calamities of the dunya and the akhirah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our families, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you to protect our families, our children, our household, our livelihood, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect this community and this masjid. We ask Allah azza wa to fill this place with, with worshippers and believers, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah to strengthen our iman, our sense of brothers and sisters, and sense of community, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And the way we all gather in this place, in this dunya, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring us together in Jannah al firdaus al-A'la with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Saliheen ala surah al-Mutaqabileen wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam It's a reminder everybody that the Shaykh will be here at, for an event at 1 p.m. seeing posters and, and reminders. If you haven't registered, please register right now. Don't wait.